Before you start another story, it's time. <laughs> no, no, not for your prelude yet. Okay, good morning. Um, just a couple of announcements that, I, <clears throat> that I, I'm using some paper for so I don't forget. This week is, um, my, the microphone is really, we turned it way down, but once you put the face mask over the microphone, the sound is... <laughs> this, oh, huh? Can you try not breathing? Actually, I might turn it down a little further for you. Um, it didn't do that at 8, did it? Did it do that? Okay. So I'll, I'll fix that. It's holding all the sound inside the mask. I can't go anywhere. Um, this, this, this Tuesday at noon is the first brown bagging with Chris opportunity. So you are welcome if you'd like to bring a brown bag lunch. Come and physically distance in East Hall and then um, discuss living in the pandemic. Each, each month when Chris does that, she'll have... Uh, a topic for conversation, not a presentation, a topic for con general conversation. So you'll be able to take your mask off while you eat and share in that, in that conversation, physically distanced in East Hall. The only thing we ask is that you please call the church office by today. So if you go home and call, leave a message on um, Laura's answering machine that you're coming because we want to make sure that there are only 12 people. We have to cut it off to, to be able to distance okay. Um, so Terry, I only see, I do not see, oh, I see me up in the corner. Okay, I just wanted to be sure that I could see me. Because it is how great thou art, not how great John is. Um, so brown bag this week. Monday night, the food pantry broke another record. The last record was 43 households. The last Monday night was 44 households. So um, we keep shooting upwards. Now here's a little thing I want to share. The food pantry is doing an excellent job, and they have lots of money right now. People in this congregation have been extremely generous with their dollars. And so there's a, a nice food pantry fund in place and ready for months ahead. If you feel inclined to give an extra gift these days, instead of the food pantry, um, the treasurer and I would encourage you to give it to the general fund. We're a little light, not bad yet. We don't want to get bad. But remember, if we don't maintain the general fund, the electricity, the snowplow, the heat, all of those things, the staff, we won't be able to do a food pantry either. So we'd rather the money not go to food pantry, but to go to general fund right now. And somewhere later on down the road, if the food pantry is in need of more money, we will make that claim. And I know that it will be generously supported. So thank you for all of you for, for doing that. Um, on, on Tuesday of this week, there was the Red Cross blood drive that Terry led and many of you participated in and we want to thank you for doing that because they, the goal the Red Cross set for us was 50 units of blood and we received 60 units of blood. So we were very happy over that, um, that blood drive because of the significant need for blood and the closing of a lot of uh, uh, blood drives because of the pandemic and storms and wildfires and so many things. So thank you for being there for that. Communion like usual, come forward, um, receive the wafer, eat the, eat the wafer, eat, drink your wine or juice, dispose of your cups, put your mask back on before you return to your seats, um, seats using the side aisles. And Am I missing anything? Thank you to Taryn, who is sharing her gift of vice today with the hymn. Immediately after the service, for those of you who are leaving, you just get up and walk out the door. If you are staying for the education half hour on race, um, just stay seated right where you are, because we'll just zoot, get, move right into it. You'll also note on the screen, because I'm so depressed this week, because if, if this was a perfect world, we would be in Montreal as a congregation right now. 30 of you had signed up to go on that trip, and we'd be having a really good time, but we're here <laughs> listening to a fantastic sermon, of course, but nevertheless, we're still here. So I, I threw up some pictures of top left is New York, not the whole group. Top right is Washington, D.C. Bottom left is Memphis. Bottom right is New Orleans from a few years past when we could actually travel and uh, do some crazy things. So we look forward to that happening again. 
So with that, I will invite us to silence everything. I will turn the speaker down a little, and we'll prepare our hearts during Lynn's prelude, which I've heard twice already. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Dear God, whether we have borne the burden of the entire day, or whether we have shown up in the coolness of the evening, your compensation is the same. You love us, you forgive us, you welcome us into the kingdom of heaven, where we can live with you and your son Jesus. Help us realize that your justice looks different from human justice. Give us thankful hearts that do not grumble. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Gospel reading for this weekend comes from the 20th chapter of St. Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them out into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idly all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. The vineyard owner said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner. They said, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But the landowner replied to one of them, friend, 
I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. So all through our human lives, we learn that good rewards come from our good behavior. When I was a social work grad student at UW-Milwaukee, the trend at the time in the early 80s for therapy was something called behavior modification. That's not gone away, it was just very trendy back then. And in this therapy modality, you reward desirable behaviors and you ignore undesirable behaviors. You don't use any punishment when you're doing this. You only reward desirable behaviors that you're attempting to achieve. And sometimes that has to happen in small increments. It can't all happen right at the beginning. It's not an unusual parenting technique. A lot of parents do it, but most parents screw it up by often punishing undesirable behaviors or by taking away rewards that children have already earned. So as young children already, you may have gotten tokens or allowance or stars on a chart for your good behavior. And then when they get to, oh, Ben over there is saying he's never gotten any. <laughs> ben, you gotta start exhibiting some good behavior at home and then you'll get a, you'll get a token. And then when you move into middle school and high school and college, you, your good behavior brings you good grades or perhaps scholarships. In our employment, the rewards come in the form of a pay increase or a promotion. So in our earthly human lives, good behavior will win us good consequences. And that promotes a particular kind of behavior that someone, your teacher, your boss, somebody in authority, desires from you. Now in the paragraph just before today's reading, Peter comes to Jesus and wants to know how God will reward those disciples of Christ who have given up so much to be able to follow him. Peter isn't just speaking for himself when he asks that question. He's speaking for all of us in this room as well. We all want to know what the reward is going to be for all of our good behaviors as Christian disciples. And Jesus gives us an answer today, and in that answer, we might find that we become a bit offended. Because, you see, his answer challenges the sense of justice that we have learned during our human lives. So we might empathize with those complainers in the story, in the parable, because we've worked really hard in an attempt to exhibit kingdom behavior, divine behaviors. And then, so in the parable, Jesus tells us that even those who come to follow, who come to be a disciple in the 11th hour at the very end, even those folks will receive the same payment from God as you and I have received for being followers all of our lives. So it makes one kind of wonder, why choose to live this life? I mean, I think about how much more money my retirement account would have in it if I didn't make a monthly contribution to a place like Lakeview Lutheran Church and numerous other charities. I think about how much more leisure time I would have to spend with my family and some of my friends, some of my friends I don't want to spend more time with, but how much more leisure time I would have up at the cottage maybe if I wasn't engaged, if I didn't spend my time engaged in mission and ministry. How could our personal lives be if we didn't volunteer to do things like cook meals for a men's shelter or didn't spend an evening distributing food to 44 households in our pantry or didn't sleep overnight for homeless families in our building or didn't donate money or cooking supplies to a shelter for homeless people who were leaving the hospital or didn't spend all that time coordinating a blood drive and then participating in it or didn't assist with providing a funeral lunch or a huge Thanksgiving dinner. How much more time, how different our lives would be if we didn't do any of those things. 
And then I think of all the people in this congregation, including some of you in this room, who have gone on, who have taken vacation time from work. Vacation, a very personal, incredible piece of time, protected piece of time, to travel with us to do disaster recovery in places like Biloxi and New Orleans and Minot and Crisfield. You and I have spent large amounts of time and money and energy on being disciples. And now today we hear Jesus tell us that folks who show up at the end and desire to be a disciple at that time get the same benefits that we get. He tells us today that God will reward us all the same. So maybe to help us figure this out a little bit, we need to understand that God doesn't pay on the base, God does pay on the basis of God's compassion, not on the merits of the worker. That's how God works. We call that divine compassion. And you know that God distributes that and it is outrageous for us. It's sort of like paying people in a factory based on what their needs are at home. So if a mother with six kids was working in a factory, she'd get twice the pay of the mother with three kids working in the factory as they do the very same job. In our faith world, we call this divine grace. And it's much more significant to us than earthly rewards. Because we have to acknowledge that none of us, not one of us, deserve the reward of the divine grace that God is willing to give us. In fact, we are all 11th hour workers because with God there is no hierarchy as this parable expresses. With God, no one gets to claim special authority. But with God, every one of us can claim, make a claim for sheer grace. So if we feel resentment over this, it might help us to overcome that resentment by focusing our eyes on the goodness of God and how this God is generous to all of us. And then when we acknowledge that, and when we come here like we've done today to worship this God, we too will be called to imitate that generosity and to not begrudge it from anyone. It's not an easy gospel lesson to hear. It's not an easy gospel lesson to take home and apply. It challenges, it will challenge our way of thinking, our culture's way of thinking, that rewards are based on behavior. This is not behavior modification here, folks. This is compassion and love. And God gives it to us freely so that we can go out and freely give it to others. Amen. The hymn today, Will You Let Me Be My Servant? You already know that the soloist is Taryn Lands. Thank you, Taryn. Be as Christ to you. 
you, Terry. That was as good as it was the first time. <laughs> Let us pray. God, your grace is hard to understand, but we are grateful you offer it to us and we pray for hearts that will readily accept it. Give the church courage to make your grace visible to all. Give us the desire to end gun violence and the routine shootings in our community. Give hope to the people of Mayville. Give us the metal to admit to climate change and then to take action. We pray for those who are struggling with wildfires in the West and with hurricanes and tropical storms in the South and Caribbean, including those impacted recently by Hurricane Sally. Make us people who are serious about making this nation a place where liberty and justice are available to all people and where racism and hatred are abolished. Move us to leave here this morning to model your compassion for others. We pray for anyone struggling with the coronavirus. Make us wise to take precautions as necessary. Help us make wise decisions on university campuses and within school districts so that all are safe. We pray for all who are grieving today. Bring healing and wholeness to anyone who is ill, including Mary, Randy, Ellen, Georgia, Ben, and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. God, you are full of forgiveness and compassion. You show us mercy every day. You gave us the creation to enjoy and to care for. You have given us this simple meal to remind us that we are all the same as we come to the table. You have given us this meal to assure us that the gifts of Jesus are gifts for us all. At this meal, we can realize that no one stands outside of your love. Help us to make this table a place of inclusion. With gratitude, we remember the words of Christ. And on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. It's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together we join in praying the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to lift us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and eat. The meal is ready. It has been prepared for you. Lynn will start on this side. Amy will follow. I will start on this side. And Jeff, you will follow me. Please remember to social distance and to put your mask back when you turn around.
Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. Thanks be to God. Amen. For those of you not staying for the um, education spot here till 9.30, get out. I mean, till 10 o'clock, get out. For those of you staying, just stay where you are. <laughs>